Okay, so this week we're studying the long step past, um, the long step past defense, really. The focus of this week is defending the long step past, and we're showing the offense so you guys can see both sides of the coin. Okay. The long step pass comes down to, I, I think, two important things, two important functions that we're doing with our arms. I'm going to ask Megan and Greg here to try to review. Do you remember what the two functions of the arms are? Uh, for, for, for the pass. For the top, for the, for the, for the pass. What, what is it? What are the functions? Don't say the grips. What's the function? What's the function? Control the head. Excellent. And what's the other grip function? Control the outside leg. You guys hear that at all? So, and if you want to lay down. Right, we learned the long step pass this way, where one hand controls the head and one hand controls the outside leg. This outside leg accounts for most of your problems when you pass guard. Passing this leg isn't usually very hard to get here. If I can hold this leg and I ask Ant to recover his guard, it's hard to do it with that leg alone. Now, if I ask Ant to really try to recover his guard, go ahead and do it. He has to use this leg. It's this leg that's gonna cause all the problems, either a lasso or sometimes a knee shield, but most of the problems come from this leg here. So we have control the outside leg and control the head. We're gonna do the same kind of thing, no key, where we control the head and we control the outside leg, but we do so in a different way. See the guard here. It's the empty way. Okay, so we know that the outside leg is an issue, so we need to control that. And we know that every guard pass ultimately ends with some form of head control. So let's set those grips right away. I'm gonna take a scoop grip on the outside leg, reaching in, elbow deep. My left arm is gonna get head control, elbow deep. I go up, elbow deep here, and I grab onto the scapula, the far shoulder blade. Now as I do this, I'm gonna take my left knee, Outside of Ant's knee here, so Ant can't use his knee in my head. We'll come back to that later. And now I'm going to long step as I pull Ant down to the back. Now, last but not least, when I'm passing guard, I want to force his knees to point away from me. So once we're in this position here, I'm going to take my right hand to the mat to force Ant's knees to point away from me. And now I can come up and I can take my guard pass. So let's see this again. Again, try to make this, try to break this down in simple terms here. We control the outside leg with a scoop grip, and I control the head with a scapula grip. So I come up and I grab the far scapula. Now from here, I go into a long step action. Basing on my elbow, just like so. Now, finally, to stop Ant from regarding, I want to make his knees point away from me. So my right hand, I'm going to go to the mat on the far side, to force Ant's knees to point in that direction, away from me so he can't regard. All right, so why don't you guys go ahead, grab your partners and start playing around with that and then we'll come back and we'll start exploring this a little more. One, two. Wait 
Hey, morning, Matthias. All right. There you go, Adam, all the way down to the hip. Morning, Ilya. Oh, good morning. Nice, Eric, good. All right, Adam, drop to your left hip. There you go. Good work, Adam. All right, Chew. I can't see where he's at. There it is. Yep. Go with that long step again, Chew. Let your left hip hit the mat. Good work. Right there. Yep. Black grip. Nice, Zach. Very smooth, long step. Yeah, I think I did. Short amount of time. What's up? Okay, everybody, let's bring it in and let's troubleshoot this a little bit. Problem. All right. Let's see. Is everybody? I'm gonna mute everybody to make sure my make sure you guys all stay on my screen. Okay. Okay, now from this position, there is some dangers associated with the long step pass. That if you're going to go into the long step pass, you need to be aware of what these dangers are so you don't get caught. One is my arms are going like this. So what do I automatically need to make sure I'm being aware of? Anybody at home, feel free to unmute yourself and chime in. You're capturing your arm and doing bad things to it. Capture my arm for, uh, for sure. Uh, and we'll talk more, we'll get more specifically. But what kind of attack looks like I'm giving graded on a silver platter? A sweep or a triangle? Triangle. triangle. triangle, just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. You guys see the triangle? Yeah. Yes. I'm going yeah. to run one arm here, one arm here. If Brain just takes his legs up and over. I'm going to get pulled into a triangle. That's exactly right. So I, I need to make sure that this leg stays stuck between my legs. Why? So when I come in, I need to make sure this foot doesn't come to the outside. If this foot comes to the outside, that's going to spell trouble for me. So I want to crowd this foot. The second danger that I want you guys to be aware of. Anytime I reach my opponent's head like so, I need to be over the knee. Why? If I'm in front of the knee, what is this going to allow him to do? What can he use this knee to do? Oh, he can frame it in the chest, right? Frame against frame. you. Yes, yeah, so he can use it to frame against my hip or control the space, control the distance. If I go to reach up for a cross face, 
but I haven't beaten this knee yet. Great right and circle, wrap this arm, create space, and pull me into the outbound. And again, that happens anytime I reach for the head and I haven't beaten the knee. So when I go for this, I come and I get my grips, I take my left knee wide so that my hip can start getting over the knee. We need our hip to beat the knee here. So I want you guys to go back with a partner doing this nogi long step pass with those two things in mind. What do I want to do to avoid the triangle? Who remembers? Control the, the leg. Yes, crown the leg here. And what do I do to avoid the arm bar? Nick, what do you think? Clear the knee, get my hip over the knee. So I come in, I get my grips, I might step up to get my hip over the knee. I crowd this leg, so if Grady goes to pull that right leg out for a triangle, it's stuck. And I go to my long step. Okay. So you want to crowd that foot so they can't pull it out from between your legs to go to a triangle? We want to make sure our hips clear that knee so we don't get caught in the arm bar. So now let's get back with our partners. Let's do this pass a few more times. This time be conscious of the submission opportunities that you're giving to your opponent. Person who's receiving the technique, if your partner makes a mistake and gives you a submission, feel free to put it on very slightly just to show them, hey, that, that's there, okay? That exposure's there. Let's partner up, guys. One, two. <laughs> So, um, whatever side has the crossroad on, you want that leg to be on the outside of the frame. So, if you're going to do the right leg crossroads, you want your right leg to be outside the frame. Nice, Adam. Good. Nice job with the right knee, Zach. Way to get that over Ashley's knee. Good. All right, Chu, what do you think is happening? Go ahead and un unmute yourself because you're on mute right now. Oh, 
Well, for anyway, we were trying something different, trying to see, uh, I guess, where we put our pressure. And then uh, he was trying to do a triangle, but then I was just kind of keeping pressure down, elbow deep on the uh, on, on the, the cross arm. face. Yeah, because if you don't, if you don't, if you're lazy on this arm, it's, it gets pretty bad. Yeah. Hmm. So it looks like, what, what's Fong being able to do right now that's causing your problems? Oh, it's just pushing his knee away. So. Yeah. So if I, if I go in, if I go in, I guess if I'm lazy and I don't get this part, the knee's kind of like pushing away. Ah. I can't get away in my leg or... Can you find a way to maybe get over that knee a little sooner or a little earlier? Try yeah, to I'll try probably. to get wider. I would have to do yeah. Like this. There you go. Good. It's all going to come down to beating that knee. Yep, yep. You don't beat the knee. <laughs> nice. We keep working on it too. You're doing good. Good finish, Ilya. There you go. Yep, Nate. Right there. Get that left shoulder nice and tight to the jaw, Nate. And long step. Yep. Good. Long step. There you go. And knee across. Good, Rogelio. Okay, everybody, let's bring it in. Okay, so now I'm gonna put you guys over by the web so I can talk to everybody at the same time. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Yes, exactly. That's right. Like, yeah. So now we know how to do the long step pass. Now we need to look at defending it. Let's rewind to the beginning of class. What were the two key features that our arms did? What, what two key functions were our arms responsible for? Throwing the leg and the head. Good, controlling the leg and controlling the head. Outside leg and controlling the head. Every guard pass ultimately finishes with some form of head control. Every strong guard pass. So we are going to defend the long step pass by challenging their head control. Okay, we're gonna use frames between my chest and their chest. And we're gonna slip our head underneath of their cross face. When they lose the cross face and they lose the head control, getting back to guard becomes much easier. So let's take a look at how we challenge and slip that slip our head and challenge the head control. Okay, one out. I'm going to, I'm going to put you on this side there. So Nick's in front of me. I'm going to see him take long step grips. He's going to take a scoop grip here. And he's going to come with his scapula grip right here. The first one we're going to do is going to be a cross frame. I'm going to take my left arm and I'm going to frame it in between my head and Nick's head. When I do this, I'm going to take both of my thumbs underneath of Nick's shoulder or armpit. As Nick goes into a long step action, I'm going to be able to use it. That should be clear. As he goes into a long step action, stay right here. I can use this, this grip to slip my head free from his control. Okay? So my left elbow is framing to maintain space. My hand is going to push up on his shoulder. And I'm going to tuck my chin into my chest to slip my head out from underneath the arm. 
So now Jake is going to go into that action. Go ahead. I slip and I end up right here. A little bit thick. So you're back. Yes. So I end up right here with my head underneath of his chest. So now from right here, do you guys remember our overhead elbow escape? I frame against Nick's chest. I bring my knee inside. And I end up with this scissor guard around his body. Now from right here, who remembers which leg do I retract first? Your top leg. Your top one. Why, Brandon? Excellent. You take the top leg off first. If I take this leg off first, Nick can run behind me away from all of my defense and tool. So the top leg comes off first. Now if he starts to run around from the free side, he goes right into my brains. So we've defended the long step pass with a head slip and then going right into an overhead elbow escape. One more time, Mr. Jackson. We'll go a little bit this way so he stands straight. So he's going to take his grips. I immediately frame with my thumbs underneath so I can apply upward pressure. As Nick goes into his long step action, I frame away and I slip my head underneath. Then I go into an overhead elbow escape. Now, as he recovers his position, I'm able to recover my guard, and now I can start going back on the offense. As your opponent is trying to pass your guard, anything you can do to stop them from getting a good form of head control on you is going to make it very tough for them to solidify the position once they've passed. Okay, so that's all we're doing. We're challenging their head control. You guys will see that after they lose that head control, recovering the guard, becomes relatively easy. If you let them hang out of that head control, recovering the guard is going to be much more challenging. Let's grab a partner. Let's try it out, everybody. One, two. All right. Let's see. Mr. Bischoff, let me talk to you for a second. Okay. Do you remember our overhead elbow escape, Adam? Yeah. Do you remember what kind of angle our body was at compared to our opponents when we did the overhead elbow escape? Kind of in the same line, right? Yeah, what was the position we did it from? North south. North south. So as you slip the head control, I want you to follow his momentum. And I want you to see if you can kind of put yourself almost north south underneath of him as you try to seamlessly transition to your elbow escape. 
Okay, so get your head under towards their hips as you push their arm across. Yes. So as you slip your head, as he back steps, he's generally going to make some momentum, and you're going to let that momentum carry you through. So as he falls, there. Now go into your overhead elbow escape. Good. So keep working that. Uh, keep trying to follow that momentum, and I think uh, the the escape will be a lot more smooth for you. Don't let him. Don't let him sit or settle perpendicular to you. Turn him parallel right away. Go ahead. One second. Good, Eric. Very good, Zach. Way to follow the motion and find the overhead elbow escape. Excellent. There you go, Ilya. Way to slip your head. Beautiful job. Nice job, Ilya. Really good, Kevin. Get that head underneath the chest, turn that angle. There you go, Fong. Nice work. All right, everybody, let's bring it in. All right, so since this technique is so closely related to the overhead elbow escape, I want to take this opportunity to go back and revisit our overhead elbow escape just for a couple minutes. We'll do this, we'll drill it a few times, and we'll see if that improves our long step pass defense. Ready to come on out. So let's start north, or uh, side control. Let's start side control. Um, so now as Braden goes to north-south, I'm gonna slip my, my north-south frames in. So I'm underneath the shoulders, just like so. My elbows are underneath the, the shoulders, framing them up. Now I bring my knees in. I scissor my legs over the body. And I come into this position here. Now I just have to recover my guard. Top leg off first, bottom leg off second, and we're back. So one more time. Again, we start underneath side control. I have my elbows in, so they're in good frame position for side control. But he's going to go to north-south. I slip one hand in front of the shoulder, and the other elbow in front of the shoulder. From here, I frame him up. Now that we're aligned up north-south, we're parallel, I'm going to bring one knee inside, one long leg, one short leg. Your overhead elbow escape. So let's just grab our partners and 
briefly review that technique that we learned a couple months ago. And then we'll come back and see if that helps improve your long step pass defense. Let's partner up. One, two. He, he was definitely taking notes. I know that. Uh, we may have learned it uh, in, a, in a one or two off class a while back. There you go, Rahelio. Good work. Good. Very good, Adam. Mr. Vang, that looks awesome. Very nice, Zach. Fong, that's excellent. Okay, let's all bring it back in and let's connect this to the long step pass defense now. You guys are looking good. So now we're just gonna do that same motion, but we're gonna start with a head slip. The finish is the same. Brandon, come on out. So Brandon's gonna take his long step grips. I bring my left arm in as a cross frame between my head and his head, and my thumbs go underneath the shoulder. As he goes into his long step, I slip my head, and I use my arms to push me into a north-south position. Once I'm in the north-south position, now it's just a matter of getting the knees in and completing an overhead elbow escape. So the, I think the big key here that's gonna make this work for you is following the momentum. Here's what you don't wanna do. You don't wanna let the momentum die. Okay? You don't wanna go here where he gives his grips, okay? You don't let the momentum die, and then I try to slip my head and get underneath. It's not to say that it won't work, but it'll be much more challenging if you let them settle. Slip your head before they settle. Use your arms to bring you north-south, and then go into your overhead elbow escape. Put him out, spring. Frame, he goes in. And I'm out. Okay, 
Um, I'll show it one more time so you guys can see what that looks like at more of a natural speed, okay? Because it happens very smooth, very quick. Here, he gets his grips. And then I'm out. Okay? Let's try it out, everybody. One, two. Jackson, beautiful. You guys aren't getting this down really well. Nate Scott, that was awesome. Beautiful rep. Slip that head, Rahelio. There you go. Nice, Ilya. Very good, Fong. Great work, Kevin. There it is. Yes. Kevin, good work. Sorry, I think that was Adam on the last one. Adam Bang.
Good, Zach. Good hip mobility, good inversion. Slip that head. There you go, Rogelio. Way to get that left leg over. All right, time. Let's bring it in. So feel free to unmute yourselves here now. Um, but I want you guys to start thinking about some of the some of the things that we were talking about today. For the long step pass, or just for for guard passing in general. Guard passing in general. If I try to pass to one side or the other. Where is most of my opponent's resistance going to come from? Free leg. Free leg. What do you mean by the free leg? What is the free leg, Zach? Uh, the, to the opposite side that you're passing from. Good. The far side leg. If I'm passing to the left, it's going to be the leg that's to my right that's going to cause most of the problems. So if we can control that outside leg, the guard pass will be much easier. We do that very well with the long step pass. In no gi, we use a scoop grip. In the gi, we can use the cuff grip on the pants. Every guard pass finishes, almost every guard pass finishes, with what kind of control? Head. Head. Yes, head control. All, almost all guard passes finish with a cross face or reverse cross face, or some type of very tight underhook to control the shoulder. The shoulder and the head are very closely connected. So oftentimes, if you can control the shoulder. That's me, the one piece. <laughs> yes, you control the head indirectly through the shoulder. Um, but ultimately, getting direct forms of the head is even, or forms of control of the head is even better, like a cross face. What does that mean for us? When, when it comes time to retain our guard. What do you guys think? Trying to defeat that or avoid it if possible. Yeah, try to defeat or avoid that head control. Try to challenge their head control. Don't just, don't just let their shoulder touch your jaw. Always try to keep their jaw or their shoulder off your jaw, off your head. Try to keep their arms off your head. Um, and it should be much more challenging for them to solidify the position once they've gotten around the legs you can stop them from controlling your head, you should still have a good chance at recovering your guard. So I want you guys to think about that today as we go into our live rolling. Think about the importance of head control. Think about the importance of denying head control. Okay, questions? All right, I'm gonna start doing some live training with my group. Uh, you guys can feel free to do some with yours if you want. You guys can do whatever you wanna do, all right? I'm gonna put some music on. One, two. Wait. Um, Bye, right. guys. We'll get it down and then see you, life. Zach. In the like that. Yeah, <laughs> and then in real life, everybody's gonna, gonna have, 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 a, gonna have our own timing. <laughs>
Sweet.
sure whether it's third or over. We're done, Coach. Thank you. You out here, Eric? No, I'm out of here. I'm going to go home. <laughs> well, I hope you guys had fun today. I hope you guys learned. What's, uh, what's an important lesson you took away today, Eric? Adam? Uh, uh, spinning the head under, like getting enough space with my arm frames to spin my head under, clear that, and I'm golden. Do you think that that could apply to some other guard pass defenses? Oh, tons of stuff. Yeah, north, south, all sorts of ways just to – Give me more mobility with those arm posts to maneuver. Yeah, I think the importance of just not letting the opponent control your head. If they get any sort of grip, a collar tie, a step, a cross face, anything, try to challenge that control immediately. Don't let that head control solidify. Otherwise, it's going to be much more challenging. Yeah, especially with this gorilla here. He's grabbing my head. It's like, no, it's, <laughs> it's not good. Not good. Him and, the, him and those guillotines, too, I bet. Yeah, that's, that's all. I'm just looking for you, dude. You got three taps on me with that. Three? Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice work. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to see you guys in this morning. We'll see you next week, hopefully, yeah? We'll see you Monday, Monday yeah. Have a good one, guys. Yeah, it's okay, like. I think that with all the screws around there and everything, yeah, it's really tight.
Yeah, we've that's where I'm at. 